territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh nations, and we are grateful for them. Um, and we're grateful for all you coming here today, and the four musicians who have practiced hard for this masterclass, and Blake Pouliot, who's giving us his time so generously uh, to share his learnings and just all the magic that happens within a masterclass. I also want to acknowledge the Israeli Foundation, who helped BSO School of Music present our International Master Teachers Program. They are the backbone of who we are here at the School of Music. And without any further ado, I will introduce Blake and we can get this master class started.
Clearly done really good work with this. This um, is a very beautiful movement. Um, I think that it's, I mean, the Brooke Concerto, of course, is you know, one of the biggest, most classic kind of violin concertos we have. Um, and you've done really wonderful work. I mean, your bow distribution is really excellent. And uh, your, <laughs> your fourth finger is amazing. It's like very powerful, you're able to use it a lot. Hold on to that because with age, it can go away. And you're doing such a good job of keeping it firm. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so yeah, you've done such excellent work. I don't have a ton to say. I mean, what I love is that, um, I feel like, you know, one of the things we can kind of take when we're learning concertos is that, you know, well, learning any piece in particular, um, there's kind of like tiers in which that we can evaluate the music we're learning um, and kind of ways that we can kind of constantly take it to the next level, you know? So I feel like the first level is, you know, putting in fingerings, learning the notes themselves, learning the bowings. And then after that, you kind of um, go up to maybe adding some phrase work and seeing how the lines move. And then after that, you usually go back and maybe change some fingerings and you're kind of trying to work the technical and the musical elements together. And at a certain point, you get it to a level where you think, hmm, what can I, how can I constantly kind of push it to that next level before it, you know, where you start to kind of move those things. And so you're at such a high level that I'm just gonna kind of offer some things that might push it to a, um, a different, you know, tier for you and, and make you kind of think of some other things. Um, Cause you, it's so well prepared, it's wonderful. Um, so, First of all, I mean, your opening was fantastic. I'm so happy that you were able to just kind of sit there and then come up here and have such a legato bow. That's very impressive. <laughs> so congratulations. That's really good. Um, this piece is, of course, you know, it's like I said, it's very virtuosic. Um, so what I'd love to do is just start again and kind of work through a few things with you um, as we get to them. Um, and then uh, I have a couple certain technical things I would love to just run by you, little exercises that I think would really help. Um, so do you want to actually just start again? That'd be great, thank you. <laughs> C 
close. I mean, kind of how you approach a slide. There's two ways of doing it. Do you know? Correct. So how you reach those notes, there's two ways of doing that. So you can either slide into the note or slide on the note previously and then hit the note itself. There's, those are the two different ways. So if you're gonna play, for, uh, for example, that's C, where you're sliding into. There's, that's sliding into the note. And that's sliding from under the note into it. So what happens in this piece, you have a ton of slides. And almost every single one, you slide, in fact, I think every single one, you slide into the note. So you use the finger that you're gonna play, and you go to the note itself, which is lovely, you do a great job. However, when you do all those slides all the time, a lot of times you have the risk of, you know, not exactly getting to the note right away, or, you know, if you're a little sweaty, or if we don't practice it perfectly, you, it can take a little longer to get to the note. Um, and so what I just want to try, which we'll go through in the piece a lot, um, is just kind of going over these slides. Can I actually grab an A quickly? Sorry. And as we go through, I'll explain to you, like, maybe some reasons artistically why you would choose one slide or the other. So right now, can you just try this for me? Can you go... Can you practice putting down your third finger and then sliding into that C? And just go back and forth. And do you see how with my bow speed, I'm almost like hitting, once I hit the note, I'm holding it. You know, so I'm really getting to the pitch. Can you try that for me, just that exercise? Right, so, so you're kind of, do that one more time. Right, so do you see how you're kind of getting to the note and then you slide into it? Can you try just going back and forth? And really make sure you're kind of hitting the note itself. So do that again. So really look where your finger is and try doing it like three times in a row. So it's each consistent each time. Good. Good. Okay, so now can you try, um, uh, actually, you know what, try from the beginning again. So actually try it once now with vibrato. Good. Now try the opening phrase again. And of course, this is after you've done this huge first movement of the Brook Concerto. 
and you have to do this gentle, sweet opening, and the last thing you want to be worrying about is kind of like hesitating before each slide. So doing little exercises like that will just guarantee that as soon as you have to come in, you're not worried about it. You understand? So that'll happen. We'll stop and do a couple of them as well. Um, do you want to just go on from where we stop?
so I only have a few minutes left of you, so there's a couple things that I wanted to really make sure that I was doing. Um, so, I mean, this is wonderful. Again, like I said, you've done such a good job. I would just say really make sure that you're going back through this and practicing being, understanding what slides that you're doing and going over all of them to understand. And also you can switch them up. So the other thing with slides is that you can, they can really make a different artistic expression depending on what you want to do. Like when you come in here, that's one way. They, I mean, it has a completely different texture, you know? Um, can you try just from there coming close? It's 87. <laughs> That's once again a slide that'll help. Can you, are you sliding from a second to a third finger? Second to second. Second to second. So, same thing. Can you try that for me? Just that slide back and forth. Really? And look at your fingers to see where it's going. So do you see how you naturally want to file just a little under, and then when you vibrate, you can vibrate into it. We don't want to do that because it's like, we want, if that's an accident, that's okay. But what you really want to practice is hitting that note so that it doesn't interrupt the phrase. You understand? So I would say go back and really do that. Can you try this one more time, but with a slightly faster, shimmerier vibrato to show the differentiation of this phrase for the first time? Should be the slide shouldn't be how you're saving yourself and how you're going to find the note. The slide should be a decoration on top of the phrase already. Does that make sense? Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, I think that we're. Patty, are we okay for time? Uh, we're fine. Wonderful. Okay. Um, uh, the one thing I just wanted to say is, can you try once for me just this ending um, right after? Um, um, when it comes back at the end, the little coda. Can you try it once for me with a lot of bow speed and no vibrato? No vibrato. thing would be that 
make sure you save on that on that note. You're gonna run at a bow speed, and that's like the top of this movement. You know, make sure you save that. Anyway, but this is beautiful. Take it. Try to take a look at just kind of perfecting your slides, and you'll just shoot this into because it's already such a high level to just put it into that next tier, so that you know you'll just be even more confident with everything you do. Wonderful. Thank you so much for playing today. Thank you. 
I haven't I haven't played this since I so I don't know um, uh, for those of you who are violin buffs um, one of the kind of most notorious uh, violin teachers of the 20th century in North America was a woman named Dorothy DeLay who taught literally everyone I mean she taught Perlman, Midori, Sarah Chang like it, you name it she just was had the crazy studio and it was like an absolute certain of hers that you had to play the Dvorak concerto before you learned the Tchaikovsky. It was just like part of her teaching. And it's funny because this concerto kind of gets underlooked a little bit. It's exceptionally difficult, but it's kind of undermined in a weird way. Um, but I mean, I haven't, I haven't done this since I was a kid, and watching you do it is bringing back <laughs> flashbacks of <laughs> high school and college. Because um, it's really, really hard. But wonderful job. I mean, it's it's really hard. It's great. Um, just a quick thing for you, if that's okay. If there's any way to cut that tooting in the yeah. middle, yeah. that's yeah. time, <laughs> just so that we have more time. Uh, I was that we, about that. Yeah, Ooh. just because it's all it's really long. Yeah. Um, but wonderful. Uh, one of the biggest things about this is the opening. I just want to talk about and and some of these other kind of like crazy things. Number one, can you tighten your bow a little bit? <laughs> it was a little loose, and it'll really help with, um, yeah, can you do that a little bit more? Can you take it a little bit more? Let's see. Maybe a little less. <laughs> so, um, so right away, this first chord, so there's four notes, and you haven't even played yet, okay? So don't feel too rushed as soon as this comes in. Can you try just with open strings once? Can you play? Right, so that's two notes on the first one and then two notes on the second. That's how that first chord should happen. It's this huge opening and then Like I want to hear, like you have all the time in the world. So can you try just the opening and then really, actually first once, try once again. Imagine you're standing there, the introduction comes in. And just open strings, dum dum. Can you try that for me? Beautiful. Now add the notes. Wonderful. But save, save your bow for that chord. You, that. Wonderful. But I want to hear more of the first two notes and then save your bow because the majority of that is on the C and the E. Try that. Good. But you hear that crunch in the beginning? This is your first note. You want to make sure that, like, people retain, like, 2% of your performance. They know the opening and they remember the ending. In the middle, don't, don't worry about that stuff. But remember, <laughs> remember, just try, like this is it's so important. And so try once again, like really make sure you're, you're hearing these first things with your bow speed. Don't crunch the bow, don't push too much, but think more bow speed. But I, you see what I'm hearing too much of the, just the C. I want to hear both notes equally. Good, but look at, look at your bow, like look at it. Good, but don't worry about vibrating too much on that. Really, like, um, you're, you're kind of focusing too much on playing these too much, let alone think more of a uh, landing on the two notes together at the beginning and then really focusing on your bow speed on the E and the C evenly. That's great, but think that your attack is quite meek. Think, like I want to see a bolder attack, you know? So get that exact sound, but with a much broader start. But I think you're, you're placing it too much. Think, think more of a, like a one motion type of thing. Beautiful, again, but a little broader. Beautiful, that's great. So now can you turn the opening and come in with that type of confidence? Just, just, just by yourself. Just try those. Ones. 
Beautiful. One more time, and look at your bow. Think, think it's like really focus on that. Good, and make sure that those, those are clean. So that you're really, and then, then it comes off more onto the E. Good, keep going. Do one more time, keep going. And build to this E. Just if you want. There's a, I don't think personally, I mean, I, I would suggest only doing that only because you're building to a forte here. It's written a forte. This is still one of the most kind of virtuosic openings. You know, like it's still this really kind of amazing opening. I think if you want to try staying in first position, because by going, you're kind of backing down. There's actually a crescendo written into that. Good, yeah. But save your bow. Save your bow on that G sharp. It's huge. Good. 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 And then take your time to build this. Wonderful, but they're great. They're putting that look, but there's a crescendo this whole time. So it's okay if you're gonna take the timing that you're doing, but build. It's like if you're going away, it sounds shy, but it's the complete opposite of that. It's just this bold, dynamic statement. So can you do that? So try you can try it slow it slowly for me once. From there are those years. Great, but even more. It doesn't, it's okay, like if you're focusing on the note, try it slowly for me once. Try it like that, that speed. Wonderful, so now, so ah, so now we're starting to see things that are not happening the same way. So, what's the fingering that you're doing for this, sorry? What are you doing? You're doing that one. Into it. Can I suggest? Can I suggest that? So do a third finger. Because then you're already there. Instead of doing a that's wonderful and did it, but you also just. It's so, it depends on what you want to achieve. You want to do it quickly. That helps you because you don't have to hear a shift. You're saving yourself. You get to shift on an open string. There's no shift. It's a lot cleaner. You know? Can you try that for just... See how you're already in position? How much cleaner that is? And then you shift again, right? So try it slowly for me, doing that, and build as you're doing it. Get louder. Good. But you're kind of sometimes like missing the string. So really look at your bow.
Are you doing, is, is it a harmonic or a solid note? Solid? So can you just do this for me quickly? Can you do, do that shift for me? Good, but do it, don't, just do it straight for me. Practice that for me, back and forth. And look at your finger where it's going. So it's a little under sometimes. So again, like we were saying before, that this is such a fast thing. You want to practice and micromanage these tiny details so that you're not even thinking about it when it's happening. Because you don't, you don't have time. You like, you know what I mean? If you're not, if you don't think about it, you don't have time. So practice for me. I want to kind of bring out is that if you don't, it's okay to have, it's okay to do rubato and play around with it, but you have to kind of have the structure first, otherwise it won't become a rubato. You know what I mean? Like, it's fine to... You can do whatever you want, but if you're, if you don't know the rhythm first, I suggest doing this with a metronome and really making sure you know then you're actually gonna have that you know like because it feels like you're rushing it and you don't have to that's what i mean is that we get really we can get really stuck with these technical things but a lot of times we actually have more time than we think but because they're so difficult we cram them in so I suggest doing this with a metronome, metronomically, and then building it a little bit bigger, and then you can kind of start to experiment with the rhythm. Um, the same thing for this, uh, for this next century, uh, the same thing. Um, same thing, I want like the tone, I think with your, with your bow speed, like really focus on having the strings be as even together. Um, great, okay, and then after the intro, can you try that for me? How many? Can you just do like two bars before that? Sure.
free, I mean, don't, don't feel so much pressure as was more speed, you know? Try that again, right on that. <laughs>
when we're it's really you have such good like technical form and everything that like I would suggest if you put more of that into try really focusing on where your sound is going with the Bach if that makes kind of any sense um, also do you listen to anybody who plays Bach at all like any other violinists for recordings you listen to Hillary that's great she's <laughs> she's okay um, <laughs> uh, and um, are there any other Bach people that you're listening to at all? Oh, uh, Augustine? Wonderful, also fantastic player. Um, second question, follow-up question. Do you have perfect pitch? Yes. You do? Then I'm so sorry to do this to you, <laughs> but I highly suggest that you listen to a woman named Rachel Podger. Now, Rachel Podger is a Baroque Specialist violinist. Um, she particularly plays Baroque music on period instruments, and that means that it's not tuned to 440. It's going to be tuned to like 430. So it's going to sound nothing like this. But I highly suggest listening to her because by listening to period sensitive music, you get a, a little bit of an idea, especially playing on instruments that were around that time. They're able to get sounds out of the violin that we aren't able to really do. Um, but it really helps with our phrasing and everything to kind of figure that out because one of the hardest things about Bach is you have all these four note chords. And of course, the way that the violin's made, how do we do that? You know, like how do you make it not sound crunchy or how do we, how do we get all four notes without kind of doing that to it? Um, and with Bach, what's so helpful about that is hearing where the line is actually going, because of course the fugue is about the same, it's a theme, and that theme is variated in different voices at the same time. Um, so again, like you've done such good technical work that I would love to just kind of work a little bit on the phrasing and where the line is going. So even this first phrase, can you try it one more time and really build to where it's going? Like I see that you have this um, crescendo, decrescendo rhythm in your part, meaning so that's... <laughs> You've already talked about this, which I which I love. Um, but can you kind of exaggerate that a little more? So like. Um Can you try that again? Really building to this last one. 
starting from the beginning. So can you start once again? Can you start from there?
so this, um, imagine that the, this is the final, like, move, imagine you have a giant organ behind you, blasting this, and you can take, you're playing solo, remember, so, this is a very virtuosic moment, it really is just this descending chromatic scale.
That's great for you. Um, wonderful job. I mean, first of all, let me congratulate you because this opening is like the hardest thing in the violin repertoire. It never gets easier. I play this probably 10 times a year. It's still just as hard as it was 10 years ago. And I'm sorry to break that reality to everyone. It never gets easier. Like it never does. And you did a really, really good job. Um, I don't really even want to kind of touch it because you've clearly done a lot of work on it. Maybe we can, we just have such little time. What I really want to focus on is, again, you've done so much good work with this and it's clear that you've done it. Um, me, one of the things that Mendelssohn was so, so even back when this was first written, it was very popular. Like everyone loved it, like clearly, come on. But um, Mendelssohn was very kind of particular with how it was written and how violinists kind of adapted it over time, particularly with the cadenza. So this is one of the first examples of a composer actually writing which that's like a big deal, you know, because before that, I mean, it was like our duty to just kind of create some virtuosic thing and then display it. So, again, everyone and their mom knows this and has played it. It's just, it's one of those things that it's so common, it's so likable, you can't go wrong with it. So because of that, I think that one of the biggest things I would love to just comment on is that I think that you can work a little bit more with connecting your phrases because when some a lot of the times what makes violin virtuosic is when we feel like the really intense virtuosic moments feel effortless but in order to achieve that we need to kind of make sure that we're timing everything appropriately okay so one of them in particular was can you start right from um, um, just from there
you're trying to do. But like, so can you try one more time, just right on it? Because if you block, if you practice doing whole chords, 
Can you just move on? Go out of there. It's like virtuosic. <laughs> now, like, you know, with harmonics, whenever we do harmonics, what makes a harmonic? It's the placement of the finger and then bow speed. What makes a harmonic sound is if you do it, if you do it too slow, the sound doesn't come as much. It chokes it. It's all about speed. So even though it feels like the note is longer, if you do a faster speed and then let it ring, it's, the note's going to come out a little bit. All right, so moving on. Great. So this starts pianissimo.
so just these are a couple things just to work on. Is like it really is good. So these um, just keeping the pacing a little bit more because I mean this entire first opening, the entire melody itself is this building arpeggio. I mean it's the whole first movement is really about this kind of rise and fall movement. And if we take too much time and too much stopping, it interrupts this like flow of it. I mean what's amazing about this concerto is that every movement is connected. You know, there's no stopping. It's like there's, it's just they completely bleed into one another. So if you take too much time in this movement, remember you have two more movements and then the piece drags on. But by keeping the flow, I mean, imagine like you start from the first note and it doesn't stop until the very end. So we don't want to interrupt it too much. But it's wonderful, just keep doing that and keep thinking about how you can, think about these like specific notes in the phrase and how we can kind of keep it moving, you know? But excellent, excellent job. Thank you so much, Valerie. Thank you. teachers, to your parents, to your support team that make this all happen. It was just an absolutely amazing day. I just want to close again thanking the Israeli Foundation and the Irene and William McEwen Fund for also for use of engagement and development programs. Thank you so much for everyone coming out. This was absolutely brilliant. You have a taxi with you, but we'd love to have a shot of the students yeah, all yeah, together yeah. before you go. It was just so special. We definitely want to remember that. And Angelique has a taxi waiting for you. <laughs> to the wire. <laughs> Amazing.